So as an introduction, the session will last around 30 minutes this afternoon. Our aim is to give you an idea of what studying the BTEC Triple Award in Applied Science will be like. And if you do have any questions, type them into the Q&A box, the chat box, and we will be, they'll be anonymous. So we will do our best to answer all sensible and relevant questions by the end of the session. Just to let you know that we also run the uh, BTEC Double Award in Applied Science, which is worth two A-levels, and we also run the BTEC Single Award Applied Science, which is worth one A-level. The Single Award and the Double Award, you can mix and match those with other A-level subjects or other BTEC subjects of your choice. But um, this evening, we're just going to focus on the BTEC Triple Award in Applied Science because that's what the vast majority of people would be applying for at this stage. Give you a course overview. Um, you'll do 13 units of study altogether, um, six of them in year 12, seven of them in year 13. Um, here they are listed in front of you. I won't read through all of those because that'll be deadly boring for you, but you can see that you have a range of assessment methods on the right hand side. So units one and five, which are the first units that you do at the beginning of year 12 and the beginning of year 13 are examined units. Um, unit three, which is the third one down in the second first year and unit seven, the third one down in the second year, those are both assessed externally as well, um, but you are able to take material into those exams, which is called pre-release material, so you can prepare a little bit for those. The remainder of the units that you do on the course are internally assessed units. So that's where you write um, coursework, you do practical work. Sometimes there are further tests and exams that you do, which aren't external exams, and all of those generate the evidence which goes towards your um, units and the qualification overall. In terms of assessment on the triple award, 42% of your final grade, um, which is a combination of examination and controlled assessment tasks, um, makes up that portion of the qualification. So you have exams for units one and five, both of them have a biology paper, a chemistry paper and a physics paper, and you'll be awarded one grade for each unit as a whole. You have what we call set tasks for units three and seven, and this is where you're provided with pre-release material or stimulus material uh, just before the written assessment, which is carried out under exam conditions. The remainder of your grade, 58%, is delivered through internally assessed units. So this is coursework based assignments and they're all consisting of between three and four assignments to complete over the duration of the two years. Um, just like GCSEs, just like A-levels, you do have the opportunity to resit exams to further improve your grades. Um, that may be subject to a fee depending on uh, how many times you have to resit. In terms of the year 12 content, we'll talk a little bit more in detail about that now. Um, unit one, principles and applications of science one, um, is the kind of foundation material that you need to understand to um, progress further with the course. So it's biology, chemistry and physics. It's a mandatory unit. You've got to do it and it's externally assessed by written exam. Unit two, practical scientific techniques and procedures, as the name suggests, is all about practical skills. It's mainly chemistry. It's a, also a mandatory unit, but this time it's internally assessed through assignment work. Unit three, science investigation skills. Very important if you're going into the field of science. This is all about practical skills development, mainly biology, but there's a little bit of physics and chemistry in there as well. It's also a mandatory unit. It's externally assessed through a set task, which is a practical activity followed by a written task. Unit four, um, to further your practical skills is called laboratory techniques and their application. This is a practical skills based unit, mainly chemistry this time. You'll do things like making a nail varnish remover, making aspirin. You'll also learn about health and safety in the workplace as well and the management of laboratory operations. It's again a mandatory unit internally assessed through assignment work. In the first year, the final two units you complete um, are unit 17, which is microbiology and microbiological techniques. This is obviously a biology based unit internally assessed through assignment work. And then unit 18 is industrial chemical reactions. So this is a chemistry based unit where you look at heat changes in reactions. You look at how fast reactions go, uh, rates of reaction, and you look at how far they go. So these are equilibrium based reactions. And then you bring all of that together to have a look at how some very important commercially um, based chemicals are produced in the workplace. 
year 13, you very much begin the year as you did in year one, which is by studying principles and applications of science, the second part of it. So again, you have a separate biology, chemistry and physics exam. They're a little bit longer than the first year. And then to build on unit three you did in the first year, you have an investigative project. So this is again a practical skills based unit, but you design and you carry out your own practical work. You research it and you present your findings in a report. Unit seven is all about science in the news. It's about science in the media, science in the real world. It's called contemporary issues in science. It's general science. It's again mandatory and externally assessed through a set task where you have stimulus material followed by a written task. Unit nine is human regulation and reproduction. Obviously that's biology based, internally assessed through coursework. Unit 10, biological molecules and metabolic pathways. Here you study the basics of proteins, carbohydrates, fats, water, lots of biologically important uh, molecules. And then you have a look at their relevance in photosynthesis and respiration. You look at some respiratory diseases and have a look at where the met metabolic pathways have gone wrong. Unit 23 is forensic evidence collection and analysis. So this is drawing again on your biology, chemistry and physics skills to investigate a crime scene and learn how to collect evidence, how to preserve a crime scene and how to analyse it. And you'd be looking at the analysis of chemical evidence from a crime scene, biological evidence and physical evidence, things like footprints and um, fingerprints. Unit 21 also highly relevant to um, our students who progress on to medical pathway careers is medical physics applications. Again, a physics based unit internally assessed through assignment work. So I hope that gives you a good flavour of all the different units that you do on the course. It really does make for a very interesting course. Um, we have in the region of a couple of hundred students on the triple award at the moment. So there's roughly about 80 to 85 students we have on the second year and we have 106 students on our first year of the course. So it's a very popular course. Um, we have around 23 to 24 students per class, four classes in the first year, four in the second year for the triple award. What you need for every lesson um, is to be prepared above all. You'll need to bring pens, including red for marking, purple for corrections, pencils, eraser, sharpener, ruler, all the standard type of equipment that you would have had at school. Um, a scientific calculator is very important, obviously, when you're taking exams as well. Course requirements uh, to get onto the course, you need to have two grade six GCSEs, or if you're doing a BTEC first qualification, you need to have merits for those. Or if you're doing OCR national qualifications at level two instead of GCSEs, you need to have those at merit standard. You need to have three further grade four GCSEs and they must include a GCSE in maths. Um, a grade three in GCSE English language is just acceptable, but if you do have that, you will be required to retake this GCSE. Um, it's a very demanding course. There is a lot of coursework to write, lots of assignments to produce. So the better you do in your GCSE English language, the better you will perform on the triple award in applied science. Um, in summary, um, what we have at Solihull Sixth Form College is a friendly, student-centred, flexible approach where you apply your learning in a largely project-based assignment setup. The teaching team's approach develops your practical, interpersonal and thinking skills. These are all things you'll need in higher education and employment, whether you go on to a degree, whether you go on to an apprenticeship. And our students are exceptionally well prepared for higher education because of their experience of research, extended writing and of course working to deadlines. If you are interested in applying, here's a slide on how to apply. You just go to our website for step-by-step -step instructions. You'll be directed to a system we have called Applica, which we use for online applications. You'll need to create your own account and that will enable you to complete the online application and log back in at any time as a registered user. So if you ever want to update any details, you can. We will then send you email confirmation that we've received your application within two weeks. We'll then contact your school for a reference. So as part of your application, you'll be required to tell us who you'd like to be a referee for you. 
And if your application indicates your Meet Our Entry criteria, we'll then invite you into college for an interview. And we hope to be able to make you an offer at the interview. Although please do bear in mind, it would be a conditional offer at that stage, dependent on whether you achieve the GCSEs as the entry criteria for the course. Yeah. Students with offers will be invited to attend a summer subject taster session and enrolment then takes place in late August, early September after your GCSE results day. So our summer taster sessions take place in June. Um, it's called Welcome to College Day and that gives you a chance to join in with a group of other students, have a go at a real learning experience like you would on the BTEC in Applied Science, just to make sure it's absolutely the right course for you. So, um, my colleague Anthony, who's presenting the uh, slides today, is just going to let me know if we have any questions from the audience. So hopefully, if you are interested, you may have typed those into the Q&A box and I'll see if I can do my best to answer those now. Uh, hello. Uh, hello. Thanks very much, Simon, um, for the presentation. Uh, as yet, there are no questions, but um, the only one I'd like to ask is um, what sort of career paths do um, students who do the uh, BTEC course go to? Quite a wide range of career paths. Uh, the vast majority are interested in medical related careers, so they do degrees in the likes of biomedical science, um, we're hoping because we're offering the forensic unit that some might now be interested in a pathway that involves a bit of forensic science. Um, we have that some, some that go into midwifery and nursing, but we have some students also that go into physical science careers. So uh, we had a student a couple of years ago who I think will be in his final year at Nottingham University now doing aeronautical engineering. So when he did his project with us, um, he did all about aerofoils and the factors that affect um, lift and drag of, a, of an aircraft wing and so on. And he's now doing aeronautical engineering. So you can go on to a real wide variety of careers in science, but also um, any careers that you go into that don't necessarily require science, but do require the skills you've developed are quite popular as well. So you could perhaps go into unrelated um, uh, careers that are unrelated to science. Okay, um, and one last question, class sizes, um, generally what are they like? Yeah, the class sizes range, the, the average is around 22 to 23, I would say. Um, so it's just under the um, limit that we deem safe to be doing practical work. Um, there's a lot of practical work that you do have when you're on the course, but it, yeah, it's around uh, around the 23 would be about the average for that. Um, we've got four healthy first year groups, and I think the student numbers are, you know, 20, 21, 22, numbers like that. A little bit smaller, hopefully, than you experience at school. Um, th that is it. Thank you very much, Simon. OK, thank you, Anthony. All right, thank you. Uh, thanks for your question. Um, just to, to, to read it out, um, is the course carried out on a five day week timetable or is placement um, involved as well? Right, really good question. So your timetable does go over five days, but unlike school, you will not have lessons um, in every period of every day. So a full time course uh, post 16 is deemed to be around 13 and a half hours a week. So you'll have basically in the first year four and a half hours of each subject. So let's say that's biology, chemistry and physics per week. Um, plus you'll have um, an hour with your personal mentor every week, your, your academic coach. So you're looking at a timetable of around 14 to 15 hours per week, but you won't have a lesson in every period. So it may be that your timetable doesn't require you to have a nine o'clock start every day. It may be that on some days you finish a little bit earlier. 
um, and you can either go home at that point or you can go to the learning resource centre, the study centre, use computers to write assignments. So um, we don't view it as free time and sometimes when you have what look like free periods between your lessons, we have what we call supervised study. So that's where you know, we're ensuring that you're getting the best out of your free time in terms of um, working towards the academic goals that you're you're looking for. And Anthony, the second part of the question, sorry. Um, or, or is it oh, placement work. involved as well? I think you've answered yes. that. Yeah. Yes, uh, we do have a work placement in the first year and a work placement in the second year. So all students go out on work experience on the triple award course, not on the double or the single, but on the three A-level equivalent triple award course, you have a whole week of work experience in the first year and a whole week in the second year. So we ask you to arrange that, but we do have um, help in college if you uh, struggle finding a placement. So we really ask that you start to look into that and arrange something that's probably um, related to your career goals. Good questions, thank you. Um, Anyone who's in attendance, uh, do, do you have any further questions for us this afternoon? Doesn't just have to be about the applied science course. You can ask uh, general questions about um, solid hole six form in general. OK, well, I'll just check with my colleague, Anthony. Do we have any more questions at all, Anthony? Uh, no more questions have come in. OK, well, I'd like to thank our audience for attending this afternoon um, and we look forward to seeing you soon if uh, you'd like to attend, hopefully, one of our future open events, which will be in person. OK, thank you very much for attending today. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.